um, we have a very special event, and that is to honor my dear friend, Al Ajo. Uh, I met Al on October 18th, 1967, at the eighth annual symposium on switching and autonomy theory, a conference as boring as its title. At a water polo game doing a welcome break, I held Al underwater until he released the ball. With that unusual way to start a 53 year friendship, we and our families became astoundingly close, vacationing together 20 to 30 times, skiing, scuba diving, cruising, and <clears throat> going to each of our summer homes. Al and Adrian even dressed up as gypsies for a piece they played at a friend's music hall. We've been duplicate bridge partners for several decades. We worked together in a relationship that I called the ivory tower in the swamp. As a developer, I was in the swamp. It was a highly productive relationship with the most noteworthy event occurring not long after I'd taken over the Bell Labs Unix development. I needed something to differentiate our Unix version from Berkeley's. I called Al and asked him for an idea. He said one of his friends had developed a new language that many have admired. I asked them the name. He said C++. With Al's recommendation alone, I decided to commercialize it. It is now one of the most popular programming languages in the world. Al has many research contributions. For example, some of his greatly improved the efficiency of our Google searches. He and his Turing Award co-recipient, Jeff Ullman, are best known for the books, which completely and clearly encapsulated much of theoretical computer science. They lay the intellectual foundation for generations of the world's computer scientists. They wrote 13 books, which have been translated into 24 languages and sold 250,000 copies. Rare hard book copies are for sale on Amazon for over $1,000. You can save some money and get a Chinese soft copy for $150. He is listed 370 times in Google Scholar with over 90,000 citations. Al's award belt has many notches, carefully engraved by a sword he received with one of his honorary doctorates. He is a fellow of the Bell Labs, the IEEE, the ACM, and the American Association for Advancement of Sciences. He is a member of the National Academy of Engineering. In 2003, he was awarded the IEEE's most prestigious computing award, the John von Neumann Medal. After Bell Labs, where he gave the first employee company-wide distinguished computing lecture for which he got a special individualized honorarium, he went to Columbia University where he chaired the department and is its Lawrence Gussman Professor Emeritus of Computer Science. He taught the hardest and most popular computer science class was on compilers the program that translate what a program writes into what a computer can efficiently run. In the early days, it took two years and 20 or more people to build a compiler. Limiting attendance, his class of 125 students was broken into teams of five who had to invent a programming language and then construct a working compiler based on the difficult theory they were learning from Al. None of Al's teams ever failed to build a working compiler. I would come in mid-semester to talk about Hilt, how teams build software. I would always see students in his office hanging on his every word. word. He won the Great Teacher Award from the Society of Columbia Graduates in 2003. Al's astounding contributions to computer theory, students and practitioners around the world are only surpassed by his humility and warmth. warmth. Alfie, my dear friend, congratulations on, not a, on yet another well-deserved award. Bell, known, Bell Labs was known by its scientific advances made by researchers 
given insurmountable challenges. It was also fun. For example, there was the well-known G.R. Emlin, a computer science mascot who was fossilized in the Bell Labs archives. He had an associate who was given Bell Labs' biggest managerial challenge, Al. As the Unix gang might introduce that famous manager, pipe in, Doug, for your part in our co-routine. Al, uh, this is Doug McElroy. Uh, and in the background is G.R. Emlin, <laughs> complete with his Bell Labs identification card. And he's sorry that he can't come, but uh, uh, there is no Zoom service in the Bell Labs archives where G.R. Emlin currently resides. Al and Jeff Ullman, who, who won the Turing Prize together, were the first certified PhDs in computer science that we hired at Bell Labs. At the time, computer science was a rather questionable and thin subject. It was brand new, and at least one of uh, its founders, uh, questioned whether anything that had to be called science was science and cited Christian science and mortuary science as examples. So it fell to the first collection of computer science graduates, including Al, to prove that computer science was indeed a science. They set about it and did it very successfully. The proof is in Al's compiler books, which still hold the field uh, almost 50 years on, or more than 50 years on. Uh, the New York Times article about, tell, about Al's prize uh, tried to make this point, but they did it pretty badly. Uh, Here's what the New York Times said. Computer science was still a strange new world. Using the computer required a set of esoteric skills typically reserved for trained engineers and mathematicians. But today, Thanks in part to the work of Dr. Aho and Dr. Ullman, practically anyone can use a computer program, a computer, and program it to perform new tasks. I have no idea where the New York Times got the idea that practically anyone can program a computer to do something new. When was the last time you programmed your cell phone? And the Times caricature is also wrong about what computer science was like before L. It did not take an, ad an advanced mathematical or engineering training. We hired programmers straight off the street because there was very little for them to learn. There was no accumulated experience. Now, To be a really effective programmer does take a lot of training to be up, up with the science that underlies it all. And it's all Al's fault. For example, to build a modern compiler, as we just was mentioned, uh, it would be well to know what's in Al's book, which is something you would not attack until well into a computer science curriculum. I'd like to describe one personal experience with Al's creativity. He once wrote a program to find patterns in text 
at blinding speed. It was remarkable in that it looked at each character of the text just once and made a decision on, on what the next step would be in a matter of nanoseconds. I, gra I grabbed it immediately for a calendar program. The, cal the calendar would be a file that had dates in it. And the dates were allowed to be expressed in anything that any American style that could be understood by a person. That means abbreviations, punctuation, uh, capitalization, spacing, all were, all were up in the air. And you can imagine the pattern that explains all that variability to be fairly complicated. Well, yes, it was complicated, but the pattern could be written by a machine. We ran this program and although it was supposed to operate very fast, it took not a short time, but billions and billions of nanoseconds. What was the trouble was that the machine started, the program started by building a special purpose recognizer that could be blindingly fast every time it saw a character and knew exactly what to do next. But to build this thing took forever in computer terms. But what did Al do about this debacle? He came up with a fantastic new idea. He interleaved the creation of the search program with the search itself, only creating the part of the program that was necessary to handle the particular document at hand. This worked brilliantly and is definitely now an important part of the lore. That example is not just, that's not just one example, an example of a feather in L's cap. It's also an example of the wisdom of AT&T in putting together, rubbing together both theory and practice with the result of improving both immensely. Al, it's a greatly treasured memory to have had the honor of working with you. And G.R. Emlyn seconds that. Well, thank you, G.R. Emlyn and Justin Bieber for your overly kind words. But, you know, I'd rather hear Bob talk about COVID than <laughs> <laughs> what I did many, many decades ago. But thank you so much, the both of you.